Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. Today we're looking at creating patterns like this one in Adobe Photoshop. Now we're going to start our exploration here on unsplash.com where I'm looking up images that relate to colour. I like unsplash.com because you can download these photos free of charge. So this one might make an interesting image. I'm looking for something with nice colour in it. You could use the autumn leaves. It doesn't have to be a sort of gradient image. It could be an image of something that just has pretty colours in it. I'm going to show you the images that I downloaded. I actually downloaded this one. It comes up really nicely because it's got such big blocks of colour. But that's not the only type of image you could use. This one would be really nice too, potentially. Things that have bright colours that are sort of really attractive. This is probably a little bit dark. This one might make a good image to use. So let's go back to Photoshop and I'll show you the images I downloaded. This one and this one downloaded this one and the one of the fruit. Now the fruit is the one I'm actually going to use. So let's see how we would do it because the process is going to be exactly the same with all of your images. The first thing you're going to do is go to image and then image size because we need to make this image a regular number of pixels wide. So in this case, this image is 4,608 pixels wide. I don't want it to be that. I'd like it to be an even number. So I could take it down to, say, 4,000 pixels wide. That's just making it a little bit smaller. And that's perfect. Now, I would be careful with this one because I would actually take my slice this way through the image. So in this case, I would be worried about the height being an even number. So I go to image, image size. And in this case, I'd be worried worried about the height and not about the width. So here it's 3,602, I just make it 3,600. Again, focusing on where you're going to take your slice and you'll see the slice bit in a minute. So now that we've got this image down to an even number of pixels across, it's 4,000 pixels across, we're going to filter and then to pixelate and we're going to mosaic. Because what I want to do with this image is to convert it from a photograph into solid blocks of colour and I can choose a cell size and this is why we made the image 4000 wide because if we divide the cell size of 100 into 4000 it goes with no numbers left over it goes an even number of times if you like so we could use a cell size of 50 or we could use a cell size of 100 we could also use 200 for example I'm looking at 100 I'm thinking the blocks are probably a little bit big so I might go to 200 on this I think that's going to be better. I'll click OK. Now we're going to the tool up here that shares the rectangular marquee tool position and it's a single row marquee. Now you'll probably never use this before or after, but we're going to use it today. And what we're looking for is a line through this image that has nice colours in it. So we just want a single line with really lovely colours. And I'm just looking for the one I want to use. I think I'd like to use this one here. So I'm just going to click in this area of the image inside one of these blocks. And that makes a selection that is one pixel deep. So I'm going to choose Edit and then Copy. I'm going to make a brand new document that we can work in that is going to be a thousand pixels by a thousand pixels. And I'm just going to paste my shape in, my, paste my little strip of colour. Now it's really, really tiny. It's so hard to see here. And it's obviously much, much bigger than my document. So what I'm going to do is just start pulling it to make it bigger depth-wise and squash it up width-wise. Because I wanted to take up half of my image here. So I'm just scaling it so that it comes down to that halfway mark. And then I'm also going to pull it up and down to fill this entire half of the image and just click the check mark. I'm going to view my layers palette. I'm going to drag this layer onto the plus symbol and I'm just going to move the duplicate across. I'm also going to flip this. So I'm going to choose edit and then transform and I'll flip horizontal. So we're virtually effectively joining it up in the middle here. 
I'm going to merge these two layers by right clicking this layer and choose Merge Down. Now at this point if there's something that you don't like you could fill it with a different color. So you could for example come in and sample a color like this one here and then you could use it to fill a stripe like this one here if you don't like that stripe and I think it might look better without those colors in it. So I'm also going to go and get maybe this yellow and I'm just going to use the paint bucket tool to fill in these two as well. Just get slightly different, perhaps slightly better colors. But in a minute you're going to see how this actually turns into our pattern and so you'll be able to make a better choice as to what's going to work for you. Now we're going to use the polar coordinates filter to actually make our pattern but before we do that the way polar coordinates work is that we get different results if we're using vertical stripes and horizontal and we actually want to be using horizontal. So I'm just going to rotate this around holding the shift key so that my stripes are horizontal and then we'll choose filter and then distort and polar coordinates and you're going to see immediately what the thing is going to look like. Now if you have it reversed, if you have your lines vertically, then you're going to get things splaying out from the middle. You're not going to get this lovely circle. So you'll know that you've made a mistake and just come out of this dialogue, rotate your stripes so that they're horizontal and start again. I'll click OK. So what we're going to do is make this into our pattern but before we do that we're going to do a couple of things. Firstly we're going to sample this color on the edge here and then we're going to use the magic wand tool to select that color in the image. Now I've got this set to point sample and a tolerance of one so that I'm only selecting this very very edge pixels and I'm going to press delete to delete them. Once I've done that I'll deselect my selection by choosing select and then deselect. You can also press Control or Command D. Then we'll go to the move tool and holding Alt and Shift. I'm just going to scale this in a little bit because we need to fit quarter of a circle in each of the corners of this document so it is a little bit too big and it will be too big because that's what the polar coordinates filter does for you so you will need to scale it down. Now that I've scaled it down I'm going to make a duplicate of this layer. Remember that this document I just created to make our pattern in is a thousand pixels by a thousand pixels so we're going now to the filter options we're going to other and we're going to offset and what we're going to do is to type into this dialog half the width and half the height of our document. Our document is a square, it's a thousand pixels by a thousand pixels, so half of a thousand is 500 and half of a thousand here is 500. And you can see that our circles are fitting perfectly here. So I'll click OK and now I'm going to the background and I'm going to fill it with the color that we sampled. So I'm just going to the paint bucket tool and I'll just tip in the color that we sampled. Of course you could change the color of your background if you wanted to do so. Now we'll go to the patterns dialog which you can get to by choosing window and then patterns. At the very bottom of this dialog is a plus symbol. You're just going to click on that and click OK. OK and your pattern is going to be added to your pattern swatches. Let's now test our pattern with file and new. I'm going to create a document really large, in this case 6000 by 6000 pixels, much larger than my pattern itself because that's going to allow me to see multiples of my pattern. I'll go to window and then patterns and just drag and drop my pattern into my document. Now let's look quickly at this image because this one's going to be a little bit different. We've already made the height an even number so it's 3600 pixels in size. I'm again going to use the pixelate filter and I'm going to turn it into a mosaic. This time I'm interested in the vertical line here. I think I'm going to use just 100 for my squares. I'm going to take my sample but instead of taking a single row marquee I'm going to take a single column marquee because I need to select down this image. So I'm just looking at the point at which I'm going to get the best starting point. So I think somewhere about here is going to be good. 
Again, I'm going to copy it with Control or Command C. I'll choose File and New and make a new 1000 pixel by 1000 pixel document and paste this in. I'm using Control or Command V. Now, chances are your piece is going to be much bigger than your document. That's fine. Just stretch it out and then start shrinking it in size. Now in the case of this particular design, I'm going to leave my colors just as they are. I'm not going to actually make a sort of mirror image in this one. I'm just going to make my circle out of the colors I've got here. So it's going to have one color in the middle and one color on the outside. So with it selected, we'll choose Filter and Distort and Polar Coordinates. And you can see here that you're going to end up with yellow on the outside and purple in the middle. If you want it the other way around, this is what you're going to do. I'm just going to cancel out of here and I'm going to flip this 180 degrees. Hold the shift key and put purple on the bottom and yellow on the top. And now I'm going to go and apply that same filter. And now we have yellow in the middle and purple on the outside. So you can make that choice as to which one you want. I'll click OK. We're going to again sample this purple color because we will want to use that for our background and then we're going to remove it by clicking on that color. You can see I'm eating into the design a little bit. I'm not really worried about that. I'll just delete that and choose select and then deselect. In the Layers panel, this time I'm going to make this a Smart Object. So I'm going to right click this and choose Convert to Smart Object. And then I'm going to scale this down in size, again using the Alt and Shift keys. I'm going to make this relatively small to start off with. I'm going to make a duplicate of this. Just drag and drop it onto the plus symbol. My document's 1,000 pixels by 1,000 pixels. So I'm going to again apply my filter, my offset filter with filter, other, and then offset. And the filter is sticky and then it's going to remember the values it had last time. So I just need to click OK. I'm going to come here to the background and I'm just going to fill it with the saved purple color. And this is my pattern. So let's just go and get our patterns dialog and we'll just click the plus symbol to add it as a pattern. Now at this point you might think that circle is a little bit small and you'd like to see how it would look much bigger. So we're going to double click on this layer thumbnail here just in the corner to open it up. I'm going to select over this shape, hold down the Shift key and the Alt key, and I'm going to make it quite a bit bigger. Now it's obviously much larger than the document itself, so we're going to choose Image and then Reveal All. And now if I close this file and save it, this is an embedded smart object, so saving it is just saving the embedded smart object inside the original file. You'll see now that both these shapes are scaled up much bigger. So we can make this pattern now with the circles a much bigger size using the same elements that we already had. And because they're smart objects, scaling them up is going to be just fine. So I'm going to the Patterns dialog and again click the plus symbol to add this as a pattern. Let's test this. Here is the smaller version of our pattern and here is the much larger version of the pattern. So you can use any kind of image to create your circles here. Just use something that has interesting colors. And once you've done this a few times, you'll be able to pick your starting image a little bit better because you'll know a little bit more about how the colors that you choose are going to relate to your final product. If you like carefully researched content like this, clearly presented in a step-by-step -step format so that you can get great results, then you'll love my Skillshare content. I'm a Skillshare top teacher. I have hundreds of short courses on Skillshare that you can access along with thousands of other great courses, all for the price of a single subscription. If you're interested, there's a Skillshare coupon for you in the description below to use to sign up. Using this coupon benefits me as a creator and it helps me continue to make free content available here for you also on YouTube. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. On the screen now, you'll see a video that I've handpicked for you. If you enjoyed the video you've just watched, I know that you're going to really enjoy the one I've picked for you to watch next.